Hey, this is Mr. Wistar, and in this lesson we're going to introduce the concept of a stack, which is a new data structure, and we're going to talk about why you should use it, and how you can use the stack class that's built into Java. Um, it's a pretty short lesson because, frankly, stacks are pretty simple as far as data structures go. There's not a whole lot of uh, methods that you need to be able to know how to use with them. All right, let's talk about what a stack is. Um, a stack is a linear data structure, and that compares similarly with um, an array, a linked list. The idea behind a linear data structure being that uh, every item in the data structure is um, connected to the thing that comes after it and potentially connected to the thing that comes before it, and that's it. Um, it turns out that you can actually implement a stack using either an array or a linked list. Either one would work fine. A stack, we're starting, when we talk about stacks, we're starting to get into uh, one of those uh, sort of classes of data structures that sort of is like a second level data structure. Uh, you need to use a more primitive data structure like an array or linked list in order to implement it properly. So what makes a stack a stack? Well, it has one fundamental property which is that you can only add or remove things from one end. Um, and we call that end the top of the stack because conceptually, if you want to think about stacks, stacks are, well, it's like they sound. If you have a bunch of stuff that you just keep piling on top of itself, uh, up and up and up, that's a good example of what a stack is. And just like it's not usually a good idea to reach into the middle of a stack of plates to try to get the one that you're looking for, you can't reach into the middle of a stack to get what you're looking for either. You can only add things to the top and take things off the top. So dishes are a classic example. Um, if you have books piled up in your desk, that's another good example. Uh, a more technical example that you might be familiar with from programming, especially from our unit on recursion, is what we call the method call stack. Remember that when you're using recursion, every time you call a method, it sort of uh, goes on top of all the other methods that are currently in process. And the way that that's handled in your program is that by actually using a stack. So each recursive call goes on top of the stack of method calls. And then if you think about what happens when recursive methods stop, they always finish in the reverse order from the order that they got called, just like a stack. The last method that got called is the first method that's going to finish, and so on and so on and so forth. And we actually call that LIFO. LIFO is an acronym that stands for last in, first out. So whatever was most recently added to the list is going to be the first thing that comes out when we go to remove something. Um, I first learned about this actually when I was in accounting class in college. And my accounting instructor, who was a great guy, had another acronym for it. He called it FISH. And FISH stands for first in, still here. And he had a little jingle he used to say, LIFO FISH. FIFO LISH, which we'll get to when we start talking about queues, but that idea that first in is still here. Um, whatever get put, gets put first into the stack has to wait until everything else is gone before it can actually get a chance to be removed. And one of the implications of that, which you should think about when you use stacks, is that uh, stacks have the potential for items that you add to them to stay in the stack for a really long time. Um, potentially forever. If you just keep piling more stuff on the top of your stack, you're never going to get to that thing at the bottom of the stack. And you have to make sure that the usage that you have in mind for your stack is appropriate. Okay, let's talk about sort of what the operations are that you usually use with stacks. And there are only three, and they're easy to remember because they all start with the letter P. Peak, push, and pop. Uh, push as it sort of suggests probably is the operation you use to put more stuff on the top of your stack so it's like your add operation pop um, is the opposite of push so therefore um, we can deduce that that's the removal operation so pop removes and also returns whatever's at the top of your stack you should be careful usually if you try to pop an empty stack your program crashes the third method, which is called peak, is kind of like uh, push light. It, it will return 
the item that's at the top of your stack, but it won't actually remove it. So if you just have to kind of take a quick look and see what's at the top of your stack, you use peek. Again, just like pop, if you try to peek an empty list, the program's probably going to crash. Okay, um, you can write your own stack class. It's really not that hard. Um, but if you just need to use stacks, um, there's actually a class that's already written that's part of the Java class called, cleverly enough, stack. Just like array list and link list, um, it is uh, a template class, so you have to define what type of stack it is inside the angle brackets when you create the stack. And it has to be homogeneous, just like an array. So if you see the example here, we created a stack of integer objects, then we added three uh, ints using the push command, and then we popped the top of our stack, which remember has to be negative 25 since it's the last thing we push. Remember, uh, LIFO, last in, first out. So we're going to pop the negative 25, and then if we were to call peak, we would get the value 7, but we wouldn't actually re return that 7 um, from the stack. So let's see another example of that. If we actually pop into our program here, ha, well, that wasn't that was an unintentional pun. Um, okay, so I've imported the stack class, um, which you have to do if you're going to use it. Now I'm going to create a stack of strings. We'll call it test. And when we create it, we have to follow the same kind of standard syntax model that we use with an array list. So now that I've created my stack, why don't I push a couple of letters onto my stack? Okay, so I've pushed A, B, and C. Let's just make sure that that compiles. So far, so good. Whoa! Can I find symbol class strings? Well, maybe if I actually use the right variable type, that would work. Okay. Um, another method which is helpful, um, which I just wanted to make you aware of in this example, which is part of the standard Java stack class, is a Boolean method called empty. And the empty method returns true if the stack is empty, and false if it's not empty. And that can be useful because it allows you to write loops like this. So if we were to say while test... Um, while test empty is false, in other words, while the stack is not empty, we're going to get the top of the stack with the pop command, and we're going to print it. So that loop is going to quit as soon as we run out of stuff in our stack, and that prevents us from having that crashing error that we were talking about. So now if I run in my program, before we try to run this, try to guess in your mind what the output should be when we actually run it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the output, I hope that you guessed correctly, is going to be CBA. Remember, uh, LIFO, fish. Um, whatever the last thing that we put in is going to be the first thing that comes out. So we put, uh, we're going to get the C out, then the B, then the A. And that's how stacks work. That's really all there is to it. Um, in this lesson, we talked about what a stack is, we talked about the basic stack operations, push, pop, and peak, and then we talked about how to create stack objects using the Java API. All right, you're all set.